Okay, um, welcome to our today's uh, class. Um, and that class is important in, in the context of we are reading, uh, we are learning for our online um, course uh, on ABC of success in 10 step. So uh, based on the book uh, written by Dr. David Hawking uh, from the book named The Map of Consciousness Explained. Um, and uh, we started this course a couple of uh, weeks ago and today we are week number five and step number four, which we will be learning. So just uh, uh, going back to our previous um, uh, weeks, uh, what we did cover, we did cover the step number one uh, about intention. That is the main uh, successful uh, people take step uh, for their making success and they make sure that uh, their intentions are according to natural principle, their intentions are aligned uh, with their action, their intentions are accurate uh, without any ambiguity, without any doubts. And then we did learn in step two of success about enjoyment, that successful people always enjoy their work. They always enjoy their relationship. They always enjoy the things and people or divinity or spirituality or, or any social uh, uh, place where they have found themselves. They always enjoy. Uh, that's the step number two we did learn. Last week, we did learn the step number three, which was serviceability, um, that they have the passion uh, to serve the people. They mostly chose those, uh, those profession, those businesses, those niches uh, which have uh, the fundamental element of service. And uh, they think that the service is the rent to live in this uh, world. The reason why, because we, we are not here with our consent. We are here on this planet, maybe by chance, maybe by God, but we, we did not consent on it. And if we did not hear with our will, then why we are enjoying here? Why we are striving for so many attractive, amazing, wonderful world we are here. And uh, only we should be here if we are paying rent. And what is a rent to live on this planet is just serve the people is just start a business and uh, on a good profit, you can serve the people or even without profit. Even non-profit organizations are increasing in the world uh, with the same spirit, uh, more probably that uh, they, uh, uh, it has a morally cause to, for this. And today we will uh, be studying uh, briefly, not in detail, about aesthetics, that the successful people, effective people, and the people who really um, make the difference in, in their life, their own life and the people life, they have a very good aesthetic sense. And we often ignore it, um, but the great people, they don't do. They have an amazing lifestyle. They have amazing choices which they make to, uh, to make the life much uh, attractive, uh, much coherent with their five senses. Now, the, what does aesthetic covers? Aesthetic basically is a branch of philosophy. Uh, obviously, we are not here for philosophical uh, approach 
to discuss what the aesthetic means. But uh, here we are discussing the aesthetic in terms of become a successful individual uh, as a seller, as a mom, as a dad, as a, as a boss, as an employee, um, uh, or as a politician, or as any of the role which is important for me. That uh, role, in that role, what the aesthetic mean is. And how does the aesthetic sense uh, cover in this? Now the aesthetic sense is very, very uh, personal to everyone. Everyone has their own choices to name anything beautiful, uh, attractive uh, in terms of visual. If they are watching something, if they are seeing th something, if uh, they are viewing something, it is very personal. They will decide it is uh, beautiful or ugly or not beautiful. The similarly, with our ears, we hear, we, um, we hear aesthetically great quality of sounds. And that makes me very spiritual, very, very, uh, what is called, uh, uh, make me excited as well. I have a nose, I can smell. And from my smell sense, I can enjoy my living uh, room, my clothes, when I, uh, when I sprinkle my perfume, uh, when I take shower, when I, uh, I go to my, my office, then the atmosphere, the fragrance in the atmosphere make me uh, very, very um, excited or bad. So that is very important, our smell. And the same thing, uh, our tongue, our tongue, our taste. So that also makes me aesthetically uh, define something is very delicious or something that's very, very uh, not able to taste or eat anything. So that sort of things we do. And also there is a fifth sense, which is my uh, touch. I, I touch it, for example, this is a microphone, if anybody can see. Okay, so I, I can touch it, yeah. So the design, the surface texture, the make of the body, make of the object which I am uh, patting, which I am tapping, which I am touching, make me also very aesthetically uh, excited as well. So it does mean that the aesthetic sense is very personal to everyone. Now, if we are business lady, if we are a businessman, or if I'm a seller, so my shop, my outlet, my office for the customer should be aesthetically very rich because they have a five senses and I need to uh, present myself or my, present my product and service in the way that aesthetically it should touch the person's heart. Other audience should like it. Not only like it, in fact, it sh they should feel it. Oh, wow, what a beautiful office it is. Oh, wow, that's an amazing product this is. For example, I have... Uh, this uh, iPhone. So when I remember uh, that when Apple they do uh, market uh, this iPhone, so when they market it, then they they enhance the old advertisement techniques and tacts for from the from the sense of touching. Like I can feel this. So what the beautiful, miraculous device it is. 
and uh, they also give you a sense of beautiful cameras, the texture, the body design, you know, and uh, and also when it produces any uh, any sound, and when uh, we hear or we talk with someone, then from the speaker we can loudspeaker or ear speaker we have also sense of auditory excellence you know the auditory excellence also does matter for me when i'm choosing why i should buy iphone or why i should buy samsung or oneplus or huawei or other brands in phone so when they are marketing their product, the companies always focus these five senses which we have since we were born in this world. And because of these five senses, our aesthetic sense decide which thing is good, which, is, which thing is not good. And that's what we are going to learn today. That's what we are going to read today. Uh, so uh, the first sense which we just discussed here is about also hearing, you know, when usually uh, a beautiful lady, a beautiful girl entering the room, based on the aesthetic sense of the observer, that lady also speaks very politely, very attractively, and that make my ear something so excited, something so enjoying uh, element I am feeling now as soon that lady is speaking. And many people, they have concern, positive concern about not to speak so what we call sexy, not to speak so um, romantic. Uh, so because the other person can feel that thing and, and you, I mean, we will be out of the track from there. So, but many people have uh, this great sense of auditory, aesthetic, sense with them and when we are selling something we must consider this thing that i'm communicating my message so that other person who is listening me they can and they should able to listen properly and very very in an absorbing way they are absorbing the right message with the right spirit through their ears, and uh, and that's it. That's a part of a amazing aesthetic uh, sense. And also, it, it's um, my my ear are two in quantity. And why God has given me two ears, and one nose and one tongue, because my ears are more uh, in process of listening the things, the nature, people. Uh, so that's why the auditory sense in building your aesthetic is so important as a successful person. So uh, let's try to read it, uh, that what the Dr. David Hawking is saying about aesthetic uh, from the book. Um, so I would ask my colleague, Jenny, if she can read it, please. Hi, Michael. Okay. Hi, Sandeep. <laughs> Sorry. Aesthetic. Yeah, Check yeah. out all the sensory modes and cover the ones foreign to your own personality by consulting with people who are experts in that area. What is meant by that? The research of neuro-linguistic programming, NLP, has demonstrated that people process their experiences of life primarily through one sensory mode or another. 
Some people are primarily auditory. Yeah, absolutely. For many people, thank you, it's a great reading, Jenny. So many people, they are primarily attracted by this auditory sense. They decide something is good or bad, and not because of the visual, or not because how they are feeling uh, to see them, but because how they are producing the sound, uh, how they are speaking very well, uh, how they, uh, they itself as an observer can sense, uh, can uh, listen it very well, can hear it very well uh, in a very different way. That's why in a market, the, the background singer, the background uh, uh, auditory actors are highest in demand because they can change uh, the pitch of their sound uh, in, in a variety of ways. Um, they can uh, do a lot of things when they are producing and creating marketing material as well. And many people, they are uh, very, very um, become excited when they see beautiful scene, especially many, many um, women and many men, when they see beautiful opposite gender, that they, they become so excited. They want to talk with the opposite gender and they want to talk uh, and they want to even touch. Uh, they want to uh, establish some meaningful relationship so that they can see that beautiful girl or beautiful man uh, for something for longer for a reason because they they more rely on their visuals and they they can't they can't live without beautiful those people so and also the the first sight of love is very popular in the world like i see that girl and on a first sight i was in the love with her and why this is because of my aesthetic visual um, sense was very dominant on myself. So only one look uh, of that girl, beautiful girl, just uh, took my heart. And now I decided I will uh, date with her. I will marry with her. I will sleep with her or, or whatever you will. And at the same time, the a uh, lot of beautiful men, they get attraction uh, from the ladies, from the women as well. And especially when the man is too much rich and, uh, and also the strong body and something. And uh, usually the women, they, they also initiate to, uh, to take, uh, uh, to, for creating, for establishing, some relationship, meaningful relationship. Why this is? Because of the visual. Our eyes, our visuals are so much dominant on us. And based on our only visual, whether this is deception or they are truly beautiful, we are dominated by them. And that uh, uh, is our aesthetic sense, our overall. And visuals are too much strong. I mean, there is no question about that. Our maybe eighty percent judgment and decision in life based on only on our eyes visual, which we see. Uh, for example, when I see, oh, what a beautiful car! Oh my God, I can't believe. It must be very expensive. It must be amazing, and. Uh, you know, why I'm, I'm saying I'm so praising that car because of my visual uh, of the design of the car, the colors of the car, the body shape of the car, you know. So we can't live without uh, uh, visual. Uh, and from, and I love my eyes, whatever this, it sees, I trust, and whether it's a deception or it's an illusion, I, I don't want to 
I don't care about this. But anyway, this is beautiful. This is wonderful. So this is so impactful. So let's come to our point that our aesthetic sense uh, is it should be very uh, prominent as a successful person. So because we are living in this world and in this world, everything is designed with your visuals, what you are listening and what you are watching or seeing that uh, make our, our world. And also many people, they are very emotionally dominated they become so emotional. They become so, uh, uh, what we call it, uh, always a packet of emotion. Uh, they start to laugh. <laughs> and at the same time, if they listen any bad news, they, they become sad. They become, uh, and, and when they see something uh, attractive, touchy, they become so excited, they become so emotional. And when we speak about some spirituality, some something about God or something about Jesus, they become so spiritual immediately, you know. So that is also part of aesthetic uh, beauty within the person that uh, obviously in a many, many way, it is not good. Uh, to become too sensitive, to it becomes too emotional. But this emotionality, this emotional intelligence make us uh, also successful. Because without emotion, uh, it is difficult uh, to make a wise decision. However, if we are too much depend on emotionally, on my emotion, that mostly I will make very stupid decision very, uh, very uh, unwise decision I can make it. So that depends uh, how you, what the level of emotional, uh, aesthetically you are. That, that's why it is so important. Now, there are also some other emotional, um, sorry, aesthetic um, elements as well. And one of the aesthetic element which make me very unique that's why I am here. For example, I like fish. Oh, beautiful, beautiful smell. I can. I like tea. I like coffee. I like black coffee. I like uh, uh, this because of not only uh, my smell, but also I can taste it. I can taste, uh, let's say, many people, they love orange juice. Many people, they love uh, grapes. Many people, they love uh, so many variety of, uh, of the taste because of our taste bird, like from our tongue, we can also decide which is good, which is not, not good. And that's why um, we, our taste birds, our taste ability also make us aesthetically are defined as well. Also, like I said before as well, our touch, when we feel, when we touch something, when we uh, uh, touch, some, for example, if you are going to buy a house, then you will start to feel what is made by wood, then you will start to touch. You want to touch and feel it, how it's look like. That is also part of your aesthetic sense. That is part of your successful uh, element within you. Uh, and you have your own um, very personal thing as well. So uh, these uh, tactile, the smell and all uh, five senses are so important for people uh, for making uh, making you aesthetically, spiritually, uh, and hence we are, don't forget we are learning about being a successful. So uh, that makes me successful. Let's try to read one of the uh, quick story. 
it's not a story actually, it's a, it's a narration about our restaurant. The author, Dr. David Hawking, he does describe uh, a restaurant where everything is aligned beautifully. I mean, the, the light system, the food smell, uh, texture of food, where they are sitting, beautiful chairs, table, you know, everything is um, absolutely alluring except one. And that is a very loud background music. And because of the background music, it is, because it is very, uh, uh, I mean, I have an auditory sensor, which is my ear, and I don't like this too much loud hippie type of music in the restaurant when I'm dating my girlfriend or boyfriend. And uh, so I will immediately decide, oh, I don't like this restaurant. All the food is fantastic, everything fantastic, price is excellent, it's very economical, but I don't like music. So let's go to another restaurant or we will never come back here again. That happens because that person who is deciding I need to stay here in that restaurant, he made decision based on his auditory aesthetic sense. That's how we are, uh, I mean, aesthetically in gripped with these five senses. So let's try to read it. Uh, I would ask uh, uh, Cynthia if you can read it, please. <clears throat> let's consider a restaurant that is very attractive. The woman who runs it is obviously a visual person. When people look at the restaurant, they see that the de decor is beautiful. She also does a great job on the food and the price, but the acoustics are abominable. People can hardly hear themselves think let alone have a conversation. The music is too loud, inappropriate in style, and plays nonstop without a single break. Eventually, it is what the it is what she likes. Oh, evidently, it is what she likes. However, it turns everyone else off from the place. Yeah, thank you. It's a great reading. Uh, so, I mean, obviously, it's not uh, uh, right. Let's go further and. Um, we see what Dr. Hawking is saying about uh, being aesthetic is, yep. is so much important. So uh, yeah, Cynthia, you continue, please read. If you are the opposite, if you do not care so much about how the things look, as long as it feels right, then you would do well to call in some people in your life who are primarily visual and ask them how it looks to them. You can tell how people process information by their language. People who say, I see what that means. How does that look to you? Are probably visual processors. People who say that doesn't feel good to me, that doesn't feel right, are obviously feeling people. Auditory people will say, that doesn't sound right to me. Just being aware of these cues will make the modes apparent to us. Yeah, thank you, it's a great reading. You see that many people when they see or hear or meet other people or go on some uh, occasions on and attend events or participate in, in some class, although everything looks beautiful, sound quality is fine, but still sometime your six senses, I feel, something is not good. I know she's beautiful, I know. I know she speaks eloquently. I know she is this, this. And absolutely on a paper checklist is good, good. But you know, is something is still, I feel wrong. I don't know why, but my heart is not going there. So what this heart is not going there means I am not feeling well. So aesthetically, I'm more emotional or intuitively a dominant person. 
So my intuitive uh, or spiritual sense is so dominant on me. And it's, instead of all complete checklist, I st I'm still rejecting Sam, that person. I'm still rejecting that event uh, because of my inner feeling. Uh, so that is my aesthetic uh, sense. It, com it covers it as well. So uh, feeling also is very aesthetic uh, management of yourself. Um, also, he, David Hawkins further say, you want to make sure you cover the sensory mode that are not in your fort. It does not take long, only an hour at most with an expert in the field to convey the idea. So uh, one restaurant grew from failure to success primarily by changing the music in the background from loud, funky Western to soft bar Baruch, which brought in high pay and loyal customers. So he's saying, he's describing that he knows one of the restaurant and that restaurant uh, got uh, success from the failure by only changing the background uh, music. So, and therefore, if you go any restaurant, they particularly, and they are very sensitive about what they are uh, playing there. If they, there is a stage, if they have a singer, they, uh, they hired a very great singer in their restaurant so that everybody in the restaurant should uh, be attractive by that singer's voice, poetry. Uh, that's very, this is their one of the primarily um, what is called uh, selling thing uh, about their restaurant. And Dr. David Hawkins, the author of this book, he's, he's advising us that you need to consult the expert of that area where you feel that this sensory mode is has some weakness and then contact the expert in that. How I can make this uh, audio or visual or emotional sense can be, uh, can be adjusted in the way that I can have more customer. The people can love me. People can like my product and service. So meet the expert. They know that uh, what sort of colors and sub, what sort of textures they need to put in your, uh, in your home or in your office. And the last uh, paragraph uh, we are going to read uh, from that same book uh, about the same aesthetic sense. So I would ask Jenny if she can read it and then we can uh, make the finalize uh, our uh, today's topic. People want to relax for dinner. They want to have tablecloths, cloth napkins, appropriate music and the right lights. Bright fluorescent lights and primary colors may be great for a breakfast diner, but they will kill dinner business. Although the fast food chains would seem to believe this obvious fact, people actually want dignity in their lives. They will reward you and appreciate you for supplying it or providing the means of achieving that state. Whatever you present, make sure it is featured in the best possible style with regard for all the sensory modalities and, if, and that it pleases as many of them as possible. It is well worth the extra trouble. Aside from the aforementioned sensory modalities, a high percentage of the populace rank comfort very high on their list. Potential customers walk out of stores for the simple fact that they could not find a chair to sit on. Many people think things over and make up their minds about a purchase only when they are sitting down. Customers appreciate this kind of caringness. Thank you, it's a great reading. So, and, and it is very self-explanatory again. Uh, David Hawking is, is describing in the book a very common sense 
but like Stephen Covey used to say, the common sense is not common nowadays in the people. So, uh, so if we are attracting the customers to come in our store, walk in our store, and <clears throat> buy this product, buy this wonderful thing, then you need to make sure that everything is uh, managed according to accordingly by walking customer. For example, if you are advertised, come here in the store and get this thing. Uh, this is beautiful. It is on sale. But if a person is coming and that product is mostly uh, purchased by older people, and when older people are coming into your store, obviously they must be tired when they reach your store uh, from the parking uh, till your store, maybe some long area, or maybe if they are coming by public transport, whatever they will uh, come by and will approach to your store, there should be some relaxation thing so that they can feel a sigh, they can feel a little bit relaxed uh, and then they can buy it. And uh, it, it is very important uh, for many businesses when they start uh, their businesses, uh, when they have a parking facility as well in their businesses. I remember when I, I go uh, to McDonald's with my family, I choose always that McDonald's which, have, which has a proper parking, proper uh, sitting for, for the family and kids, uh, and easy to move here, there, and uh, proper sitting place should be there. So I, I have my own aesthetic criteria uh, when I go for outing with my family for McDonald's ice cream, for, for burger in McDonald's. Uh, I always reluctant uh, to shop anywhere where there is no parking because finding the parking is the biggest, uh, I mean, it's my preference and that is my aesthetic, uh, uh, person, person, uh, aesthetic thing in my personality. I prefer parking first. I, I can't go five, 10 minutes go and finding the parking and then park there and then walk and then show. I, I don't have time. I don't want to waste my time. So that is my thing. So this is just example I'm saying. Uh, so in our life, if we believe that we need to be a successful person, then we need to consider all our five senses, our auditory senses, our visual senses, our smell, our taste, and my tactile, my touching uh, thing as well. Because based on these five senses, we build our aesthetic personality and that personality is very personal. But make sure that your personality as a customer, uh, other seller can uh, adjust but if you are a seller, if you are a business lady, if you are a businessman and you have a shop, you have an outlet, you have a, a walk-in store, make sure majority of your audience should feel fulfilled by these five senses. Aesthetically, they should be, uh, they should be uh, what is called completed. They feel fulfillment of all four senses. I'll give you a quick example. I think five, six years ago when I first purchased my iPhone and I walked into the Apple store in, in, in London, in, in a local store, when I went there, there was no place for sitting where I can uh, touch the iPhone and feel it and play it and make a final decision before I choose my iPhone model. And uh, it was very annoying for me because there was a long walking uh, distance between, uh, I think from the parking where I was going into the store. 
uh, it's around 15 minutes walk. It's, it's a very giant uh, store where, and within big building, I have to go and navigate into the Apple store. And that was very annoying for me. And then later, I mean, next year, uh, or I think next year, when I went again to upgrade my phone to the next model, there was there were some chairs and uh, I was able to sit. Now, I'm not saying that they put the chairs because of me. They put the chairs and desk and benches <clears throat> because of the very fact that uh, people love to sit also when they go in a walk-in store. They can't just stand and buy the things and they cannot check the thing. So Apple recognized this need of the people through aesthetic seller ability as a seller. And then they, they uh, of course, everywhere when you go to the Apple store, there are benches, you can sit, you can relax. And even some of the store, they offer you a uh, tap water as well. Oh, would you like to have a water? We have a water. Uh, so that is their aesthetic uh, uh, approach to fulfill the people. So, um, and that's the, I think today's uh, uh, our class content. Now, let's discuss if you have any question, if you have any point, what do you think that aesthetic sense is so important for making success? Or is just uh, one of the optional element to become, make you a successful person? It's just an option or it's a mandatory to become a successful? What do you think? I will, I'm asking my Facebook audience as well. Uh, Michael, Sandeep, Wahid, uh, you tell uh, that having an aesthetic sense is uh, mandatory to become a successful seller or person or uh, just an individual or it's just an optional, it's not mandatory, it's not very compulsory, it's not very fundamental. And uh, what do you think, Jenny or Cynthia, if anybody wants to comment on this before we close uh, this, uh, uh, this call? Well, if you want to be successful and draw people in, you have to go beyond what you think is always right also. Um, and, and think about what other people might want. So to me, when you're doing something like that, it's, it's, I don't think there's anything wrong with you getting other opinions before you complete everything. I guess you might say advice also. That's right. I agree. I agree. You know, when you were saying about the Apple store not having a place to sit, there's still some of the Apple stores that don't have a place to sit. You can only stand. And when they're so busy, you're standing for a long time. I see. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it is because uh, many uh, stranger, they come there, they sit for longer uh, for unnecessary. And obviously they think that how we can stop them. And uh, in particular areas, they want to discourage not to sit and they have removed the benches. Maybe this is one of the reason. Or second thing, maybe their store size is too small, too narrow. So if they will put the benches, the people cannot walk around and uh, go wall to wall, shelf to shelf to buy different products. So to making the space, maybe they, uh, they have removed the desks. It, possible yeah jenny people um you know it's it's so great to have a business where someone's going to purchase something in your business but they're buying based on how they feel and so with such a welcoming environment and you know the music's right but not too loud like you know in the restaurant if it was if everything was kind of easy and, you know, you just felt really welcome and good about everything. The food is pretty in the way it's presented. The service is exceptional. 
you know, you leave just feeling great. And if they take everyone into consideration, because if you think about it, everyone has a different expectation when they walk in and it's not necessarily what you're presenting. They have something in their mind that you can't possibly know before they come in. So you kind of have to wow them to where no matter what they were thinking, it kind of, like you said, pertains to everyone that they leave with this great experience. Not what you think is a good experience, but what everyone could think is a good experience. And that's a tough market because we're all so different. Um, You have to offer something for everyone that that's just kind of good across the board and exceptional that makes you stand out as well. Well, I I find that that service. It's always the way you're treated, the way you feel. I I find that when I'm downloading designs, it's like, oh, well, I love this, but how many other people will? So I have to go beyond what all my lights are when I when I get um, um, designs and hope that other people will like them. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's right. Because they have something in their head and you'll show them something and they're like, "Mm, no, that's not what I was thinking at all. Or, you know, active listening, they tell you these things and you say something like, well, show me something similar to what you have in mind. And then you can be like, oh, okay, that's what they want. And then you can give them a presentation. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, it is also important when we are buying home or the house de- decorators, when we hire them to design, let's say, living room of my home or bedroom of my home, or uh, when I'm designing some guest room in my home, uh, I think all aesthetic vision, what you have, does matter. If you have a poor aesthetic sense, uh, then you don't care whatever, whichever home you will buy or what sort of room you are going to add on in your current home. You don't care. uh, And it is not very important for you. But some people, they are very, very sensitive and they are very concerned about those people who probably will come in the home as a guest. And uh, for example, if somebody has a friend and family large circle and uh, that person is going to buy a new home and imagine if that person has a good aesthetic uh, sense and uh, but not personal aesthetic, but he or she wants to serve all incoming friend and family then that person will uh, design his or her home in the way that uh, it should be liked by most of his friend and family. And in terms of the, their look, how they can perceive my uh, home design, how they will be uh, listening here uh, in, in terms of auditory, for example, when they enter the main home, uh, when my guests will come, a chime which is hanging with my uh, my door or in the room, that start to produce beautiful sound. If I think that the auditory sense does matter uh, for my guest uh, to get attracted to me, towards me, because I'm serving him, he or she is guest, she is coming to my home. So something... I will consider a lot of things. For example, if I'm very spiritual, then I will design my home so that uh, uh, my friend and family can feel spiritually very well. Maybe I will put some of the um, uh, religious or spiritual stuff uh, on the walls uh, so that I want to give something great message to my friend and family who will come. So that all because of my aesthetic vision, what I have. So that's why aesthetic um, sense is so important for successful people, it's so important. So um, that's it, Uh, next week, the same time, 
on Facebook and Zoom, uh, we will be learning the step five for becoming a successful person. And that's step five is attraction. Now, what does it mean by attraction? How attraction make you successful in, as, in a personal level or uh, as a business man or business lady or as a mom or dad or in any role? What does it mean by attraction and how this element I will consider uh, to improve or think consciously about attraction? Um, I will bring the content about con attraction from from uh, from the book. This book is amazing. Let me sh show you this book. You can buy this book as well. This book will again change your life. Uh, if you can see here, the map of consciousness explained, uh, and the subtitle is "A Proven Energy Scale to Actualize Your Ultimate Potential" uh, by David. R. Hawking, who is my favorite psychiatrist, and also the uh, church uh, big uh, personality he was. Uh, so that's it. So I will see you next week. And uh, don't forget to subscribe the my YouTube channel. Uh, there must be a link below, especially for Michael, Sandeep, and Wahid. There will be a, a YouTube channel. So just join the join it, subscribe it. I'm trying to build a community of same like people. Uh, and also you can uh, spread an awareness uh, to your friend and family to join this one hour class every Sunday, the same time. I believe this one hour will impact on the quality of your life you are living. Just 60 minutes in a, in a week is uh, seems nothing is a very little time, but that little time may act as a drop of uh, a water, which when it dissolves into the lake, it becomes part of lake. So, and, and let's consider this uh, 60 minute of learning in this way. So thank you so much. I'm Marathi, and I will see you next time the same, uh, on the same Facebook channel and, and the Zoom. Thank you. Have a good week, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much. Great class, Meritib. I highly enjoyed it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye.